Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us with another uh, Rock in Action webinar series. Uh, so in the demo case today, uh, we're going to present the packaging processes and see how we can analyze these processes uh, in RockyDM. My name is Ahmad Haknegatar, and I'm an uh, application engineer in RockyDM, and I'll be happy to uh, present this webinar today. About the packaging processes, uh, this vertical filling is commonly used in different uh, industrial sectors, such as food industry, chemical, and petrochemical industries. And uh, the whole goal of uh, using the simulation for these processes is to be able to drive some type of results to be able to optimize the design or operating condition for the packaging processes. Ultimately, this will lead to uh, be able for the engineer to be able to control the material loads during the packaging process, uh, evaluate the sealing time or uh, optimize the sealing time uh, to be able to reduce the, uh, the maintenance or any downtime of the process. And at the end is uh, also is very important to uh, optimize the efficiency of the packaging by being made sure that the material is loaded uh, evenly in the package and also the shape of the material is important to, uh, uh, based on that, be able to optimize the process. And uh, the Rocky DM is providing a set of tools to be able to provide this simulation altogether. The most important one is absolutely being able to represent the real shape of the particles. As you can see on the right side, we, uh, in Rocky, we can have different form of the particle shapes represented in the system, and we can have a combination of them. For example, you can have custom shape of the particle. If you have a, a food material with custom shapes, you can import them. You can have rigid sh shell type of particles like uh, potato chips. You can have flexible fiber, elongated fiber type of material. Also, you can have a flexible shell particle, which can be used to represent the, uh, the package itself. And having all these features, all of them put them together with a set of uh, like post-processing and very efficient and uh, performance simulation, you can run your simulation and be able to optimize the design of your processes. In this demo case, I'm going to uh, show a packaging process, vertical packaging, uh, where first we import the geometries, uh, including the clamps doing the sealing part and also holding the shell, uh, shell elements for the package, then also set the motions to perform the sealing process, set the material properties and material interaction for the specific uh, type of food and the package that we use for the simulation, and also import the custom shape of these particles into the system, and then later on how to inject these particles, and then run the simulation and perform post-processing and analysis on the simulation results. So here I have a uh, demo case. The case setup is already saved as backfilling. I'm going to start importing the geometries uh, for the clamps. So there's going to be like two clamps in the system, uh, two at the bottom representing the uh, left and right clamps doing the ceiling. Then there are two clamps on top uh, to close the uh, package and hold that. And then the next thing is that I'm going to add the inlet for the injection of the food material into the system. So define the location and you can see the inlet is added on top. Next thing is to add the motion frames, motions of these uh, geometries. I need three motions in total. One of them is for the lower clamp to push up and enclose that region to hold the package and two other motions, one for the left clamp, and then the other one for the right one. And uh, I just need to define the time to perform these motions and a specific velocity, translational velocity for this motion to happen. I can also duplicate these motions to speed up like uh, setting up the cases because for the left and right clamp, I just need to define them in different direction of motion. 
next when I have these motions and define everything so I can go back and assign them to the geometries. Uh, I know one of them is going to be for the lower clamp, the other two is going to be for the left and right clamps. So I select on each of these geometries and assign them one by one. And before starting the simulation at this stage, I can look at the motion to see the motion that I define. Is it represented in a way that I want or not? As you can see, like the two clamps at the bottom are performing the ceiling and uh, the other clamp, uh, the lower clamp is pushing up one. Next thing is that I need to define the material properties. So for the boundaries, I just keep the default value. And for the particles, I know I'm going to have two uh, different types of particles. One of them is the shell particle representing the package. I'll just adjust the density. And also I have another properties for the food particle that I reduce the density representing uh, regular like food nuts uh, density. And also the material interaction. So here we can assign it, but uh, for this simulation, I'm just going to use the default values for the material interaction between the materials, how they uh, interact with each other. Next thing is to create a custom shape of the particles to be added to the system. So first one is I'm going to just create an almond shape particle. And I can use the template shapes available in Rocky as far as, uh, as, far as polyhedron particle and adjust the aspect ratio and the number of corners for these particles. And live, I can see, like at the same time, I can see the shape of the particle represented on the 3D view on the right side. So I can make sure that the shape is representing the way that I want it. Also, I can adjust the size of this particle. And uh, so this was for the foot particle. And next thing is uh, I want to add a shell particle. So this time I need to use the custom shell that is taking the information from the 2D surface STL file. And then I assign a thickness uh, to this shell particle. The shell particle then is uh, imported through the STL file. Next thing, define the thickness, the size. Uh, and uh, because I want it to be flexible, I have the option to go to composition tab and define the number of elements to be specified on that uh, shape that we saw. In this case, the, each of the elements going to have a joint and I'm going to define the uh, joint properties, uh, how to be performed uh, during the simulation. And now when I zoom in, you can see that uh, shape is not just one element, it's created from multiple elements, 4,000 elements that you define. Next thing is to create injection for the material. So for the uh, almond shape particles, I just use the inje a continuous injection. And for the shell particle, for the package, because I have one particle, I define it through a CSV file to exactly define the location that the material that the particle should be released, which basically is X, Y, Z coordinate and the release time for that particle. Then when I import it, it will be added. Uh, so now I have another custom input to the system. One of them is for the shell particle and another one for the foot particles. And also the last thing is uh, in the solver tab, I define the duration for the simulation and the output frequency, uh, how, frequent I get the results and then define the processing units to perform the simulation here I just use the CPU but we have option to use GPU and multiple uh, multi GPU as well for the simulations I hit the start starting the simulation and uh, so immediately at the beginning of simulation the shell particles added through that custom input that we define as you can see it's created from 4000 elements so it's a flexible uh, shell particle I can make the geometries transparent. And as you notice, like already when the simulation is processed, I can post-process the results. I can look at the results that are completed already. Uh, and so like, as you can see, like every time so when I get the results, it's updated automatically in the 3D view and I can see it and I can do the post-process. I head over to the end of the simulation when all the results are completed. And now you can see, so for the, first half second 
uh, it was the clamps to just push against each other. And after that, the materials are injected, the food are injected. I can see properties like as translational velocity, or I can see more useful like forces in normal tangential direction for each of those particles or the uh, elements on the shell particle on the package itself. So here I just change it back to the translational velocity and I go to the last time step. One thing that I want to do right now, we're looking at all the particles. I want to differentiate between how I visualize this particle. So I create two property processes on these particles uh, based on the particle group. So uh, we have two particle groups, the food and the shell particle. And based on that, I filter them basically or using the property process. I can also duplicate this one for the other particle. And this will let me to uh, differentiate how I visualize and how I post-process each of these particles. For example, the shell particle, instead of looking at the elements, I just change it to just look at the nodes on that shell. So we can see the uh, other type of particle, the food particle that are inside. So if I move back, I can uh, see the flexibility of the shell and the particles that are added inside that uh, package. Next thing, so if we want to look at values like the volume fraction that is uh, defined by these particles packed at the bottom, uh, so we first need to create a control volume using the Q process here that I use and limit the region where I want to perform the analysis. And then I can disable the eye icon to focus only on the part that I want to perform the analysis. And then I can create the Eilerian statistic process to convert this uh, discrete type of properties to continuous form of them to be able to get the information like the volume fraction inside each means. And this volume fraction right now is showing the volume of each of those particles over the volume of each of the beans uh, represented by the Eilerian statistic. And this is dynamic, like throughout the process when the particles are coming in, these uh, volume fractions are updated. Uh, so just for the simplicity here, we can uh, even get the average value of uh, this volume fraction for all these beans that were in the simulation. So if we correctly limit the region where the uh, cube, the control volume is uh, located, then we can get the average volume fraction, which represent the uh, packing efficiency for our simulation. So through the results, what we can get is uh, finally be able to uh, drive some design decision and uh, be able to optimize the operating conditions for our packaging process. So here, what we had was uh, just a, a food almond type of shape, but this can be uh, represented through different shape of parties for different industry. As you can see, like it can be potato chips or it can be like gummy bears uh, through important custom shape of the particles. And each of them representing different uh, solid fraction inside the system. Uh, and what the engineers can do is to analyze the void regions, uh, analyze the sealing time, uh, analyze uh, the packing efficiency, and all together have this information to uh, minimize the downtime and the maintenance for this process. With that, I uh, want to conclude this uh, demo session for packaging processes. Uh, we have other session uh, during these months uh, for different type of processes. So uh, if you're interested in any of other these processes, feel free to, uh, uh, keep, in, uh, keep in touch with us and uh, follow us on uh, our website, LinkedIn, Facebook, and so on. Thank you very much. I have to also mention that uh, there is a survey pool that is uh, going to be shown right now on the window. Please feel free to complete this survey. Uh, your uh, feedback is valuable to us and we appreciate it. Thank you.